Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a look outside through live cam, it's a wet morning, San Antonio. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey to see what the weekend weather conditions are going to be looking like. And good morning. It's six o'clock this beautiful Saturday morning. I'm filling in for Max Massey this weekend, and I'm joined by the lovely Sarahs. The Sarahs. So good to have you, Jonathan. <laughs> I slept so well last night yeah. because of that just gentle, it wasn't like an aggressive rain. Right. It was like a gentle pitter patter all night long. And we're going to continue to have this drizzle at least through the first half of the day here. We'll see drizzle let up a little bit this afternoon, but unfortunately it's a damp start to our weekend and not ideal weather for everybody trying to get out and enjoy our beautiful uh, city of San Antonio, but we do need the rain. Let's start off with the radar. I've turned up the intensity here so you can see the drizzle on the radar. A swath of light drizzle moving through downtown San Antonio as we speak. A little bit more organized into Gonzales County, Guadalupe County, and in Comal counties as well. This is impacting the visibility. Take a look at some temperatures in the visibility where you live. Around San Antonio, visibility is down to three miles. New Braunfels, visibility is down to two miles. Up in Bernie, visibility down to half a mile this morning with temperatures chilly in the upper 40s. So a cold start to the day and pretty damp. So it'll be drizzly this morning, but the clouds stick around all day. So because of that we're only forecasting 58 for the high so a cool Saturday it's going to be cool this evening too. notice though that tomorrow temperatures start off near 60 degrees we have a chance for some rain in the early morning hours but we will see some sun in the afternoon 72 so if you're looking for a window to enjoy some time outdoors this weekend I'm going to go with tomorrow afternoon that's the best opportunity for you to see some sun soak up those rays and you're really going to want to because the week ahead looks chilly and damp Damp for most of the week. So I've got to look ahead to that forecast in just a few minutes. Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. More protests are expected today in Memphis in response to newly released video of the violent arrest of Tyree Nichols. Now Nichols family says five responding officers beat him so severely he died days later. Those officers are now fired and facing charges, including murder. This morning, Nichols' mother is joining Memphis officials and President Joe Biden in calling for peaceful demonstrations. ABC's Justin Finch is in Memphis with more. We do want to warn you, our viewers, that this video is graphic and it may be difficult to watch. Now release four clips of Memphis police body camera and surveillance footage from Tyree Nichols January 7th arrest. You guys are really doing a lot right now. Bro, Stop. lay down. I'm lay, just trying to go home. Lay down. One police body camera angle showing officers pulling hey, Nichols from his car during a traffic stop. Get me. Mom! Mom! Three days later, the unarmed 29-year-old died from his injuries. Nichols' mother telling ABC News, I'm not going to stop until I get justice for my son. Nichols' stepfather, Rodney Wells. I just wanted them to see why they charged these police officers with murder. Uh, this video illustrates exactly what happened on those streets that night. These five former Memphis police officers now fired and facing charges, including aggravated kidnapping and assault and second degree murder. Lawyers for Nichols family calling the city's swift action a blueprint. We won't accept less going forward in the future. We won't have black officers treated differently than white officers. We won't equal justice under the law. <laughs> Peaceful protest in Memphis where marchers shut down busy Interstate 55. Justice for Tyree Nichols. And even more demonstrations nationwide from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. And more fallout. Two paramedics and two Shelby County Sheriff's deputies are now off the job amid investigations into their responses the night of Nichols' arrest. Justin Finch, ABC News, Memphis. The suspect in the 2021 shooting at a Boulder, Colorado gro grocery store is incompetent to stand trial. Now, a district judge said 
At a competency hearing Friday that the state's mental hospital evaluated Ahmad Alyssa and reached that conclusion. Alyssa is accused of killing 10 people at a King Supers grocery store on March 22, 2021. The state doctors are hopeful he could be restored to competency in the future. He did not appear in court and remains in custody at the Colorado Mental Health Hospital in Pueblo. The contempt of Congress trial of former Trump White House advisor Peter Navarro is being delayed possibly for months. The trial that was scheduled for Monday has been postponed by a federal judge. The former January 6th committee held Navarro in contempt for his refusal to turn over documents or testify about former President Donald Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election. The judge did not set a new trial date, but did schedule executive privilege debates through the end of March. Kim Yo-jong, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, is strongly denouncing the U.S. decision to send tanks to Ukraine. This was released in a statement Friday to North Korean state media KCNA. Kim, a senior member of the North Korean government, accused the U.S. of further crossing the red line by continuing to provide Ukraine with military equipment. Now, Kim announced North Korea's support for Russia, saying that providing these things would be a total disregard of Russia's concern about security. With Americans living longer and inflation running high, many Americans don't have the luxury of worrying about their retirement savings. But a new law passed at the end of last year has some important changes that could help retirees. ABC's Morgan Norwood explains how this new law can improve the financial outlook for those ready to retire. The giant federal spending bill that President Biden signed into law in December includes major changes that will make it easier for Americans to build a stronger retirement account. So I think this is good news for so many individuals who are looking for different ways to save for retirement. The law called the Secure 2.0 Act raises the age when holders of retirement accounts have to start taking money out of those accounts. The age rose from 72 to 73 in January and will rise again to 75 in 2033. That gives your money a longer time to grow without the need to pull that money out. Starting next year, another new part of the law allows employers to contribute money into the retirement accounts of employees who are making student loan payments. I think this is a big deal because some individuals who save or want to save for retirement may only be able to do it on a limited basis or not at all because they're paying their student loans. And starting in 2025, most private companies with 401k or 403b retirement plans will be required to automatically enroll new employees in those plans. And for workers who need help building an emergency fund, the new law may help with that too. If you're someone who's hoping, okay, I need a better way to save for emergencies, this could be the answer. So what would happen going forward is that an employer's plan, such as a 401k, you'll be able to set aside some money for emergency funds. The employer would also be able to match some of those funds. The Secure 2.0 Act will also make it easier for part-time workers to contribute to their employer's retirement plan. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. All right, time is 608, temperature 49 degrees. Coming up on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to a beer garden on the Riverwalk for some cold drinks and bar bites. And who will be San Antonio's next stock show and rodeo junior pit master? Coming up, we're bringing you a behind the scenes live look of high school students competing to be the next top pit boss of South Texas. Very cool. 49 degrees at 6.08 this morning. It's nice to see the rain. <laughs> we really needed it. And I know it's not a lot, but that nice little drizzle I hopefully is just helping just a little bit. Sarah Spivey says how long we can expect the rain to stick around for. We come back. It's all about technique and the recipe this morning. Jefferson High School students are putting their barbecuing skills to the test. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Junior Pit Master Competition. That's right. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us live from the competition grounds on the city's east side. Alyssa, how does it smell out there and how are the students coming along? <laughs> Yes, Max and Sarah, good morning. It smells so good right now. That is why I'm smiling ear to ear, but the students are doing great. They've already prepped chicken, ribs, and brisket. We're gonna show you how they're working together right now. You can see them using the tools to get that meat juicy, tasty, and ready. Now, it is raining a little bit out here, but 
They can't smoke us out with that. You like what I did there, Sarah, that weather joke? I hope you enjoyed it. But enjoying us now this morning is Pit Master Junior Instructor Stacy. We are so happy to have you this morning. Stacy Carroll, good morning. Tell us about how the students are preparing this uh, wonderful uh, meets here and what they'll be doing throughout the day. Absolutely. We're going to spend the next 12 to 14 hours. We're going to be injecting and smoking and checking and wrapping and cutting and they're going to be communicating. And uh, this is this is a process that they put together with the chicken and uh, they, we've got leads for each meat. And they were just a, a happy family working on this. What else can we tell you? Wonderful. And if you don't mind telling me, you know, a lot of people may be wondering what they'll be judged on. Maybe you could talk about that appearance, taste, those sort of things. Absolutely. The first thing that the judges are going to look at is they're going to look at the appearance. How good does it look? Is it shiny? What do we want it to look like? Each judge will be given kind of a general direction on, on how to judge that. Uh, the next thing that they're going to be tasted is on the, the taste. How does it taste? When you put it in the mouth and you chomp on it. But they're also going to be rating the texture. Does it taste the way and does it feel the way it should feel when it goes in? Yes, ma'am. Exactly. And of course, we're claiming that Jefferson High School is going to win first place. And when they do, talk about what these students are going to win. Oh, my gosh. This is a fantastic opportunity for all of these kids. It is the grand prize winners. The team will split $20,000 scholarship fund to go uh, towards what wherever they want to go, as long as it is something dealing with the ag sciences. And and to me, that is a win for any team. But we certainly would love to be splitting that pot with these five kids standing right here. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Stacy. We appreciate it very much. We'll keep you all updated throughout the day to find out, tell you all how they place and how that winning's looking. Reporting live from the San Antonio Rodeo Stock Show and Junior Pitmaster Competition Grounds. I'm Melissa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. A true pit master, you know, rain or shine, yes. cold or hot, they're out there in the morning. Right. You know what it reminds me of? Cowboy breakfast. You oh, know how yeah. cowboy breakfast every year, the weather can kind of be iffy? The weather never would play nice. Well, <laughs> it, it just breakfast. goes to show, you know, February, February ends up being a pretty damp and chilly month for us from time to time. Yeah. And as we head into this next week, as we start February, that looks to be the case for us. Let's start, though, with a look outside right now with the radar. Some mist and drizzle around San Antonio being detected on the radar here this morning with a few more robust areas of light rain showers out in western Gonzales County just now starting to get closer uh, to uh, that highway there from Seguin toward Gonzales. Again, a few of those heavier showers, although they're light rain showers, to be honest with you, but they're more robust up near New Braunfels, Santa Clara, and through parts of downtown San Antonio right now. That's where we're seeing some of this lighter rain. As far as rainfall totals go at the airport, we really have only seen about a tenth of an inch of rain. But hey, we'll take it. Again, things looking a little damp as we are starting our weekend. I think this drizzle, most of this drizzle should let up into the afternoon, but still if you're planning on being outside right now, it is going to be a damp start for you. Take a look out there right now. Foggy uh, and misty. It's 50 degrees at the airport. Visibility down to three miles at the airport. The temperature and the dew point are going to be right next to each other all day today. That means that it's going to there's going to be areas of mist and drizzle patchy at least throughout the day too. visibility down to half a mile in Bernie down to less than two miles in New Braunfels down to three miles at Stenson down to two at Hondo and it is a chilly start to the day. Here's a look at your neighborhood temperatures 48 in Seguin 48 in Bulverde 49 in Lotus 47 in Kerrville and 50 in Canyon Lake. Your case at 12 hour forecast fog and drizzle through the mid morning hour at least notice that rain coverage does go down as we head throughout the day. We'll be in the mid 50s around noon, still cloudy, a few showers out there around noon as well. And in the afternoon, even though the drizzle should let up, it is going to stay cloudy all day long. Temperatures holding steady at 58 degrees tonight. So if you have Saturday night plans, it's going to be cool, but not necessarily cold. And it's going to be uh, a, a 
cloudy evening as well. Here's a look at the high temperatures this afternoon. Notice the temperature spread. So around San Antonio metro area, temperatures topping off in the 50s. This is where the drizzle is going to stay most robust. But further to the west, Del Rio closer to 70 degrees. It will be in the 70s down 35 toward Laredo and around uh, the hill country mid 50s for the high temperature. Let's talk a bit about our weather setup. Take a look across the northern tier of the United States. We've got snowfall occurring for areas across the northern part of the U.S. Here's a look at a front. This front is expected to move through. Uh, the timing is a little iffy, but we think Sunday night into Monday morning and temperatures behind this front are pretty chilly. It's four below in Bismarck. Now we don't expect to get that cold here, but that front is going to impact our weather and here's how. Now early tomorrow, I do expect drizzle to develop again during the day tomorrow in the morning hours and then during the morning mid morning hours we'll have a few isolated showers and perhaps even a thunderstorm or two then skies are going to clear in the afternoon and we're actually going to see some sun tomorrow so if you're planning on wanting to spend some time outdoors tomorrow afternoon is the best time to this weekend it'll be 72 degrees after that 30 percent chance in the morning for a few showers then as we head into monday scattered light rain possible throughout the day on monday and and on Tuesday as well. Notice too on Tuesday morning, there's a small chance for some very light wintry precipitation up in the hill country. I don't think that's the case here in San Antonio. We'll stay above freezing in San Antonio on Tuesday, but that's something to keep in mind if you live across the hill country. So scattered light rain Monday, Tuesday with the most robust rain chance on Wednesday for us with scattered showers and storms. Another thing to keep in mind, temperatures are going to be chilly throughout the week next week. Highs only in the 40s and 50s. So tomorrow, 72, that's the warmest we're going to be for the entire week. I'll be talking more in depth about that rain chance on Wednesday, the best chance for rain, and we'll talk rainfall totals as well. I know we have a lot of visitors right now in San Antonio. We have the Royal Rumble. It's, uh, the big wrestling Absolutely. match at the Alamo Dome uh, tonight. My husband's going. That's exciting. So I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to go out and about, especially in the downtown area. So pack an umbrella and maybe dress in layers. Yeah, that's great advice. And drive safely, right? Be safe on the roads. <laughs> Time is 619, temperature 50 degrees. Next, David Elder takes us to a beer garden on the river to see the yummy bar bites and some cold drink options that you can enjoy. All right, it's time for the lottery. We have uh, pick three. Those lucky numbers are seven, nine, six, zero, fireball zero, daily four, two, nine, six, one, fireball four. Cash five, three, 16, 24, 31, 34. Let's look at our mega millions, four, 43, 46, 47, 61, mega ball 22, mega fire four. Good luck. Talk to me about this sandwich, how is it prepared? It is a hand-breaded Nashville-style chicken thigh on slaw and pickles on a butterfly bun. And this is huge, this isn't like your standard size. People ask for a second bun just so they can finish it. That's a chicken sandwich. Cheers to you. We gotta cheers this. Yeah. There you go, that's the bite. That oh, was, they're at Elsewhere. Sweet. Elsewhere is uh, right up the street. Right, right up the street. Yeah, it's really good. They do have a really good chicken sandwich. Right I now. like their adult uh, Capri Sun stuff. I've never had one, but it, I haven't had it one looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, time is 624. Temperature is 50 degrees. We'll be right back. A new Prohibition-style bar is set to open this March in the colony in Denton County, and potential patrons will need a secret phone number to gain access. It's called Red Phone Booth. There will be an exclusive cigar and craft cocktail lounge that is open to the public. However, if you want to, you'll have to dial into a restored London antique Red Phone Booth to gain entry. Now, guests will only be able to get the secret number from Red Phone Booth members local hotels, and select local restaurants according to a press release. Now, it'll be open from 4 p.m. to midnight Sunday through Wednesday and 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. Thursday through Saturday. Secret secrets are no fun. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cool enough, so I'm upset not to, that, uh, you know, it's going to be difficult for me to get in. But well, we have a red booth here, so. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, folks, <laughs> time is 628. Temperature is 50 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Happy Saturday at 6.30 a.m. It is January 28th. Almost February, guys. Almost there. Almost, Almost Valentine's Day. Oh, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. You need to do something for Valentine's Day. <laughs> but the weather, Sarah, it's starting to feel like February weather. Oh, it is. You know, okay, we had the winter storm in February of 2021. Usually right around February is where we get some of our coldest weather. And right on cue, we're expecting a cold snap here in the week ahead. But before you get too excited, we're not expecting any of that uh, icy precipitation or anything like that around San Antonio, but it will be cooler. Now, as you're stepping out of the door right now, it's 50 degrees in San Antonio, upper 40s across the hill country. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to the metro area. 49 in Rio Medina near Medina Lake, 48 in Seguin, 51 at Stinson, 46 in Bernie, 48 in Kerrville. And here's a look at the radar right now. You can see that there are areas of drizzle. If you step outside, Side, hit the roads right now. You're going to run into a bunch of road spray. It's pretty damp out there, so just be ready for that. And unfortunately, during the day today, we're not going to be seeing any sun. Now, we'll have drizzle through the morning hours with some patchy fog, perhaps even a bit of patchy drizzle even around noon when we'll be in the mid 50s. And in the afternoon, only 58 for the high temperature. Winds will be light and variable today. So, talking about the forecast, today's forecast damp, drizzly, cloudy, and cool. Tomorrow, though, if you're wanting to spend some time outside, isolated morning uh, rain, but in the afternoon we'll have some sunshine tomorrow. So we are going to have a bit of sun in the afternoon. Tomorrow should be nice to get outdoors after about lunch on Sunday. But next week, chilly and damp. We're talking temperatures only in the 40s and 50s next week. And I'll be back to talk about our rainfall potential, too. We need the rain in San Antonio. A lot to cover in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. A woman is in the hospital this morning after being shot in the leg on the city's southwest side. It happened on the corner of Deep Valley Drive and Apple Valley Drive. San Antonio police say the woman was riding around with her husband, driving through a neighborhood looking for suspects from a robbery earlier on Friday. When they drove by an alley, shots were fired and struck the vehicle several times. The suspects took off and the woman was taken to University Hospital. She's expected to be okay. The activist group Act for SA is continuing its push to hold police accountable when it comes to San Antonio. The group says it's compiled hundreds of San Antonio police suspension records. It put an online dashboard together. So the records date from 2010 to roughly last summer. Act for SA Executive Director Ananda Thomas says the group gathered info from open records requests, SAPD's website and media reports. Most of them are what we pulled directly from reports. Um, some of them we did have to summarize a little better to fit in the box. Thomas says the dashboard will be updated a few times a year. She says now there's no excuse for other police departments that hire SAPD officers with bad reports to claim ignorance. Meanwhile, the San Antonio Police Department says it already posts suspension and arbitration records on its own website, but we checked and those links to those records only go back to December of 2020. And in New Braunfels, police union members have one week to collect signatures on a petition that could help them create a crime control prevention district. The first step to create a board was rejected by council last month. The petition would force the creation of the board in order to force the CCPD to be placed in the spring ballot. Now, voters would then decide if they want it. Supporters need more than 3,200 signatures by next Friday. The CCPD would not create a new tax. It would reallocate about $3.5 million from the $9 million budget that goes into the Economic Development Corporation budget. It would be in a one-eighth increment. Uh, it would equate to about three, three and a half million dollars extra to the department's budget. Those against the creation of the CCPD say public safety needs are already covered by the general budget. Public safety receives about 51 percent of the city's spending allocations. Well, evidence, a hammer was the highlight from the Andre McDonald trial. Yesterday, the Air Force major is accused of killing his wife. Earlier this week, his wife's relatives took the stand. They claimed Andre admitted he stomped on his wife, Andrea McDonald, after they fought over a business. 
Prosecutors also spoke about a hammer with blood. That was evidence. But a medical examiner says the autopsy shows Andreen McDonald died from blunt force trauma, which may have been caused by more than stomping. Would that be consistent with being uh, struck by a multi-phased tool? Yes. Would that be consistent with being struck by a claw hammer? Yes. A forensic scientist says Andreen's DNA could not be ruled out from the blood on the hammer. Andreen's remains were found on a ranch in North Bear County back in 2019. KSAT will continue to cover the trial on Monday when prosecutors are expected to rest their case. It's unclear if the defense will call anyone to testify. For months, people donated money for the victims of Uvalde, and more than $22 million started going to beneficiaries in November. The National Compassion Fund says about 95% of those funds have been dispersed. There are about 500 beneficiaries. Right now, there are 17 minors that still need to turn in the necessary paperwork before they can get their portion of the fund. The National Compassion Fund says it told families to submit those documents but until then, it's uncertain when those payments will be made. A school tradition is now being used to turn a tragedy into hope. 14-year-old Marcus Rutledge was left with severe burns on over 85% of his body after an accident in the kitchen over the holidays. His parents say he was joking and playing around like he always does when he knocked over a pan with hot oil on Christmas Eve. His road to recovery has been a difficult one, spending Christmas in the last month in the hospital. Marcus was finally released last night where he'll continue recovering at home. His classmates at McAfee Middle School dedicated their Rocket Fest Carnival to Marcus, raising over $5,000 for him. I only ask for prayers and anything else any, that anybody can do, we're grateful for. And he told us to tell his friends that he loves them and he, he's, he appreciates all of them and that he's so happy, you know, to have the friends that he has. And that it, he, the only thing he says is, Mom, let him know to keep on praying for me. Mom and Dad don't know when Marcus will return to the classroom, but he'll, they hope he'll make a full recovery in about a year. Happening right now, dozens of high school student teams from across the state are all competing for the top spot in the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Junior Pit Master Competition. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joins us live from the competition ground. So Alyssa, we're learning more about the students behind the grill this morning. Yes, good morning, Jonathan and Sarah. First of all, I have to tell you all again, the smells are the aroma. It's just actually getting better and better as time progresses. But we want to show you the skills that these students are putting in place. They have the skills to prepare those ribs, to chicken and brisket. But as I spoke to Jefferson High School Pib Master instructor Stacy Carroll, she tells me these students have a diverse skill set. She's joining me right now to speak with us and tell us more about these students. They can do more than be masters at the grill. Absolutely, but part of this program is not only to build the community, but also to give them the skills to take this forward. You know, everybody needs a side hustle, especially these days. So what we really want to do is get these kids to learn the, to how the, what's the cost analysis. If, if someone wants them to come and, and, and help do some cooking for a special event, they need to know how many people, how do I break that down into price, and know my value. Know that their skills are worth something and that they should be paid for it. So we give them those opportunities and uh, I think it really works for them and I think they enjoy it. Wonderful, and talk about some of the students that we have here. I, you mentioned that they're part of different organizations and they're taking away life skills from them. Yes, we have such an amazing diverse group of students. We have student athletes. They're having to learn that time management. They're having to learn to balance being a scholar, having to balance being an athlete, but also a competitive cooker it's it's so many communities it really gives them that global perspective that we really try and do at our, our IB world campus and we have musicians we have artists and to watch them come together and use their skills like the artistry it's really cool to watch them season the meats they're very refined and very particular and then our athletes they're like we got to get the time down and they are the technique is the drill and kill it's beautiful to watch how they bring those skills together for a perfect, perfect team. Perfect. Thank you so much, Stacey. I appreciate it. And you all, we're going to wrap it up here and send it back to you, the desk.
ask one last look before we go. Take it in, Jonathan and Sarah. I know it's looking good. In a couple of hours, we'll find out how they place and what they win. Reporting live, San Antonio Rodeo Stock Show, Pitmaster Competition, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Good luck to all those pitmasters out there. That's right. I can smell it from here. All right, folks, time is 641, temperature 50 degrees. When it comes to vitamins and supplements for your workouts, it can be challenging to pick out which ones are best. Next, Marilyn Moritz tells us what vitamins are worth your money and if they really work. Hmm, it's going to be interesting. Taking a look outside through live cam, we have zero visibility, <laughs> just some couple of lights out there in the distance. But we'll be checking in with Sarah Spivey to see how the day is going to play out and if this drizzle is here for the rest of the day or not. Vitamins and dietary supplements have become popular with latest trends on diet and health, but do they work and how do you know which ones are safe and which ones to take on a regular basis? 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at some of the biggest sellers. Red Bull is among the millions who hit the health aisle. Lots of vitamins every day and then zinc usually just during the winter months when I need a little extra boost. A survey by Consumer Reports found 60% of adults take at least one supplement every day. But do they work? It's difficult to know if a supplement is actually working, especially if you're making medication or lifestyle changes at the same time. Besides vitamins, the most popular supplements people take for overall health are fish oil, calcium, and probiotics. Research shows that taking fish oil can help reduce inflammation, that calcium supplements can help with bone health, and that probiotics can treat diarrhea from taking antibiotics. But so far, no research demonstrates that probiotics actually improve overall health. Zinc is popular for strengthening immunity, but unless you're zinc deficient, you probably get enough by eating a balanced diet. Melatonin is very popular for sleep. Taking melatonin can help you fall asleep about seven minutes faster, and studies show it's particularly helpful for those with jet lag or sleep disorders. But avoid taking high doses over a long time because it can interfere with the body's natural production. Some supplements come with serious side effects like liver damage. Consumer Reports recommends avoiding chaparral, colt's foot, and comfrey. It's best to speak with your doctor before taking any supplement. If you don't need it, you may just be wasting your money. And if you take too much, it could be dangerous. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, melatonin. Too much of anything is dangerous. Right, right. right. Everything with moderation. It's good advice this morning, Jonathan. You're very welcome. Even coffee, which I love. <laughs> oh, I just Got finished it. my coffee and I want another one, but I'm not going to do it. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? We're going to be seeing quite a bit of uh, opportunity for rain in the coming days. You know, we've got the drizzle right now. Tomorrow looks isolated at best, but in the week ahead, take a look at these rainfall chances over the next coming days. So right now we've got that drizzle about 50% coverage. Early tomorrow, there's an isolated shower or two possible. But Monday and Tuesday, we expect scattered rain. Now, most of that will be light, but by Wednesday, good rainfall on Wednesday. We're talking healthy, healthy rain amounts, especially on Wednesday. Here's a look over South Texas the rainfall potential through Thursday. Now the highest rainfall amounts will be east of San Antonio toward Houston and toward Louisiana. However, even around San Antonio, we could easily get half an inch to an inch of rain, especially on Wednesday when most of that rain will fall. And we need that rainfall. It's been very, very dry outside, a lot of drought. Unfortunately, though our drizzle is coming over on the weekend right when a lot of people are wanting to be outside here's a look out at the airport right now and it's 50 degrees with drizzle and visibility is down to about three miles so very chilly very damp you can see 410 there pretty damp there on the roads and elsewhere we're seeing visibility as low as half a mile in hondo no drizzle out in del rio though that's some good news visibility down to zero in rock springs visibility less than two miles in kerrville visibility less than two miles in San Marcos, down to half a mile in Bernie, less than two miles in Castroville. This is all showing the, the uh, mist and drizzle out there. You know, the radar, in order to show mist and drizzle, it has to be pretty close to the radar. And the radar is near New Braunfels, and you can see that we are seeing some of that drizzle on the radar locally around San Antonio. More shower activity, though, toward Luling and Gonzales early this morning. <clears throat> 
pardon me, but down near Floresville and Wilson County, seeing some of that light rain as well. Now, as far as rainfall amounts go, we've only seen about a tenth of an inch of rain around San Antonio, but we can show you uh, about 12 hour rainfall totals and estimates here. Again, this is only going to be showing uh, areas close to the radar, so it has been drizzling over Medina Lake and Castroville. It's only showing though capability closer to the radar. So when we look at rainfall amounts, about a tenth of an inch of rain here and there, a half, uh, about a few hundredths of an inch of rain here and there. All in all, though, this is very, very light, just creating a bit of a nuisance out there, unfortunately, for us. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the forecast for the day. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast drizzle this morning for us. Notice that rain coverage comes down during the mid morning hours, but still some drizzle and fog. It'll be in the mid 50s by noon, staying cloudy all day in spite of the fact that the drizzle will let up in the afternoon. 58 degrees for the high and then temperatures coast in the upper 50s overnight. Now, here's a look at tomorrow's future cast. So we'll start off with some drizzle a lot like this morning. And then as we head into the mid morning hours, an isolated storm or two is possible. Although notice the best chances are east of San Antonio toward Hallettsville. And then we're going to see sunny skies in the afternoon. So we will see some clearing tomorrow. If you want to get some time outdoors, the afternoon tomorrow is your best bet. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty stormy up near Waco in Houston tomorrow. Here's a look at tomorrow's high temperatures. The average high is 65. We're going to get into the 70s tomorrow with some sunshine, even into the 80s south west of San Antonio. Now here's a look at our weather setup. There is a cold front to our north. This is going to be moving through Sunday night into Monday and it's going to set up a chilly week. So we get warm tomorrow, but then look at the highs in the coming days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 40s and 50s. And again, on Monday and Tuesday, we'll have scattered light rain, perhaps even some light ice possible in the hill country on Tuesday morning. Notice that in San Antonio will stay above freezing, but as you know, Hill Country just a few degrees colder. So we'll continue to keep you updated. But as you're planning the week, the jacket and boots are needed all week long. We can't complain because we need this rain. Absolutely. And, and again, we are under exceptional drought. So if we can get an inch of rain, that would be good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is a really big deal. It's happening today. Get ready to rumble. Some 40,000 WWE fans are expected to rock out the dome tonight for WWE's Royal Rumble. To help get fans downtown to the dome, VIA is offering a park and ride service. It'll be available from Crossroads Park and Ride beginning at 4.30 p.m. And return service will continue until one hour after the show ends. So WWE fans will pay just $1.30 each way for this service to and from the Alamo Dome. Cash and credit cards are accepted. You can find this information on KSAT.com. My husband is going to this. Oh, fun. And but you I have to say it. Let's get ready, ready to rumble. <laughs> this is a big deal for WWE. It is. And I know a lot, of, a lot of people in San Antonio enjoying our downtown area, just like Sarah Spivey and saying, bring, bring a rain jacket. That's right. Maybe an umbrella if you're heading out tonight. That's right. All right, it's 656, 50 degrees outside. We'll be right back. We're seeing drizzle out there this morning and we expect it to be pretty damp through at least about lunch and then around then still some patchy fog around we will be in the mid 50s around noon upper 50s only for the high. It's going to stay cloudy all day with light and variable winds. Then tomorrow a few showers in the morning, but then we will see some afternoon sun. That means a high temperature warmer in the 70s, but that's about as warm as we're going to be all week long. Take a look at the week ahead. Light rain Monday and Tuesday. More robust showers on Wednesday. Highs only in the 40s and 50s for us. So it's going to be cold as we start off uh, February, guys. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, to all of our visitors and out-of-towners this weekend, please enjoy the Riverwalk. I know there's a lot of things going on, but like Sarah said, make sure um, umbrella and boots today, yeah. today. Just a bit damp out there, but sunshine tomorrow. Okay, thank there you guys you so it. much for watching. Be safe.
Good morning, cold and damp here in San Antonio. We're seeing some drizzle out there and you know what? This is only amounted to about a tenth of an inch of rain. Looking at the day today, it's going to stay cloudy all day, even though the drizzle is expected to lighten up into the early afternoon. We'll only be looking at a high temperature of 58 degrees today. Light and variable winds for us. Better rain chances in the week ahead. I'll have those details coming up at 8. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. We're starting off the weekend damp and drizzly. We've got some drizzle moving through San Antonio as we speak. Went ahead and turned up the intensity of the radar here so you can see it. Uh, now, another way to see the drizzle is by looking at the visibility. So in San Antonio, visibility is down to two miles. It's 50 degrees. In New Braunfels, chilly at 52, but visibility is down to one mile. In Pleasanton, down to two miles. Bernie and Kerrville, high uh, temperatures this morning are in the upper upper 40s with uh, visibility down to less than a mile. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast drizzle through the mid morning hours by about noon, that's when we'll really start to see the drizzle let up, but it's going to stay cloudy and cool today. High temperature only of 58 degrees. Now coming up at eight, we're going to talk a little bit more about better rain chances in our forecast next week, especially by Wednesday. So we'll hope you join. Oh, you I hope you'll join us for that at eight enough for us today. We'll have drizzly conditions with a high temperature only in the upper 50s. Drizzle will let up a little bit in the afternoon. After some early morning rain tomorrow, we'll have afternoon sun 72 tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day to go outside. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, protests are popping up across the country in response to newly released video of that violent arrest of Tyree Nichols. The charges police officers are facing and what happens next, that's coming up. Back here at home, the smokers are sizzling for a junior pitmaster competition. We're live with a group of Jefferson High School students as they put their barbecue skills to the test. 50 degrees, 8 o'clock, really can't even see anything out there. That's because Sarah Spivey says, hey, we're having cold and mist this morning. When will this rain clear out? She'll let us know in just a bit. The drizzle is here. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 8 <laughs> o'clock this beautiful weekend, and I'm joined by the beautiful Sarahs. Thank you, Thank Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Gosh, <laughs> so sweet. The blush. Not just <laughs> handsome, but oh. also sweet. But guys, guess what? We are starting off with drizzle and some mist out there. Not the best weekend for outdoor activities, but we are going to have a window where we will be looking at clearing skies. Today, though, it'll it's going to stay cloudy all day, although the drizzle is going to let up in the afternoon. This dampness will be with us throughout the day. Again, you can see on the radar drizzle uh, ongoing around San Antonio. You can see that too on our trans guide cameras. This is 410 at Cherry Ridge. You can see the uh, the fog and the mist, some dampness on the roads as well. And as we look around the city of San Antonio, visibility is only at about half a mile at 51 degrees. It's 51 in New Braunfels with two mile with one mile visibility and Pleasanton 52 with two and a half mile visibility. Visibility is worse across the hill country and Bernie it's 48 and visibility is about at a quarter of a mile right now. So the mist, the drizzle, the fog, it's with us this morning. Again, we'll see that lift a little bit, but it is ex still expected to be pretty cloudy this afternoon. High temperature near 60 degrees. That's it. So cool all day long. Temperatures will not cool down in the overnight hours. In fact, it'll be 60 to start the day tomorrow. A few showers and storms in the early morning, about 30% chance. But we will see some sun tomorrow afternoon that will allow for a high temperature in the low 70s. So coming up, we'll talk about how we have much better rain chances even beyond this weekend. And February is going to start cold. Details for you in just a few minutes. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, high school students from across the great state of Texas are competing right here to be named this year's San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Junior Pitmasters. The competition happening just outside of the AT&T Center. That's where you find GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us live. And Alyssa, rain or shine, it's not stopping these pitmasters. That's exactly right, Jonathan and Sarah. Rain or shine, it doesn't matter. The smoke, the aroma, still smelling great out here. You can see this parking lot is filled with competitors. I'm gonna take a step aside. I got a chance to talk to some folks out here. Look at that tent right here ahead, the blue tent, Mick 
Mullen ISD. They're coming from McMullen County. They drove all the way down here to San Antonio. We appreciate them. We're hearing that they're the big competition around here. They've won several awards, but our Jefferson High School, local high school students, they're ready to turn up the heat on that competition. Come over and walk with me. We're going to show you how these students are preparing right now. They're already slicing onions and having that meeting, talking about how they plan to execute their 12 to 14 hour day. They'll be focusing on perfecting chicken, ribs, and brisket. They're using this as an opportunity to not only learn how to be better cooks, but how to refine their life skills by using teamwork, communication, entrepreneur skills, and so much more. Coming up in our next half hour, one of the competitors will tell us what they're competing for and how they'll be judged later today. A little secret is going to be on taste, texture, and appearance, but we'll go into all those details in our next half hour. Reporting live from the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Junior Pitmaster Competition, I'm Melissa Cole for KSAT 12 News. Great job to everyone out there. Thank you, Alyssa. More protests are expected today in Memphis in response to newly released video of the violent arrest of Tyree Nichols. Nichols' family says five responding officers beat him so severely he died days later. Those officers are now fired and facing charges, including murder. ABC's Justin Finch is in Memphis with this story. We do want to warn our viewers this video is graphic and may be difficult to watch. Now release four clips of Memphis police body camera and surveillance footage from Tyree Nichols' January 7th arrest. You guys are really doing a lot right now. Bro, Stop. lay down. I'm lay, just trying to go home. Lay down. One police body camera angle showing officers pulling Nichols from his car during a traffic stop. A street surveillance camera captures officers holding Nichols down as other officers kick him and beat him with a baton. Officers later seen holding Nichols up as more officers strike him in the face and chest. Three days later, the unarmed 29-year-old died from his injuries. Nichols' mother telling ABC News, I'm not going to stop until I get justice for my son. Nichols' stepfather, Rodney Wells. I just wanted them to see why they charged these police officers with murder. Uh, this video illustrates exactly what happened on those streets that night. These five former Memphis police officers now fired and facing charges, including aggravated kidnapping and assault and second degree murder. Lawyers for Nichols family calling the city's swift action a blueprint. We won't accept less going forward in the future. We won't have black officers treated differently than white officers. We want equal justice under the law. <laughs> Peaceful protest in Memphis where marchers shut down busy Interstate 55. Justice for Tyree Nichols. And even more demonstrations nationwide from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. And more fallout here in Memphis. Two paramedics and two Shelby County Sheriff's deputies are now off the job amid investigations into their responses the night of Tyree Nichols' arrest. Justin Finch, ABC News, Memphis. To some other headlines around the world, seven people were killed and three others were injured during a shooting at a synagogue in Israel. It happened Friday night in a Jewish settlement just east of Jerusalem. The Associated Press reports a Palestinian shooter was killed at the scene by police and some victims are in critical condition. It's the deadliest attack on Israelis in years and political experts believe it, raised, it raises the likelihood of more bloodshed in the near future. Back here at home, celebrity and talk show host Jay Leno has been hurt in yet another mishap. This time he's dealing with broken bones after a motorcycle accident. The comedian told the Las Vegas Review Journal he was, quote, knocked off his bike last week, breaking his collarbone, two ribs and cracking both kneecaps. Leno says he was riding through a parking lot and didn't see a wire that was strung up until it was too late. The former Tonight Show host says he's okay. But in November, Leno was hospitalized with severe burns on his face after a fire in his garage. It's 8.07 and 51 degrees. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> it's still ahead. 8 San Antonio is home to almost any food you can imagine. And today, David Elder is taking us to one of the city's newest pizza joints on Texas Eats. 
If you love the great outdoors and taking pictures, you're in luck. A special contest from Texas Parks and Wildlife could earn you up to $500 HEB gift card. Ooh, who doesn't want that? And some other fabulous prizes we'll explain after the break. And taking a look outside, zero visibility at the moment. It's 51 degrees, but we're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey to see how the rest of the day is going to be holding up. Welcome back. And if you didn't know, Texas State Parks is turning 100 years old today or this year. And they want to celebrate by giving everyone a chance to win park passes, HEB gift cards, and even a special state park experience. All year long, Texas State Parks, they are hosting a photo contest and will have four seasonal prize winners before the public votes on a grand prize winner in December. The lucky winner will receive a Texas State Parks pass, $500 HEB mm -hmm. gift card, and a VIP curated experience at a Texas State Park. All photos must be taken at a Texas State Park or natural area before November 27th. For details about the contest, including a link to the contest rules and entries, visit ksat.com. I'll have to tell my dad he's an avid birder and goes to state parks almost any weekend he's off. Oh, he has to. See. And we get the family text gets all the pictures, whether it's <laughs> a native plant or a bird or even an alligator in Port Aransas. So. I need, him, wow. I need him to win us that 500 HEB gift card. Oh, my goodness. Yes, come on, Dad, sign up. <laughs> okay, so when I was near Honey Creek State Natural Area, mm -hmm. I saw a golden-cheeked warbler. Oh, oh I know. The good on you bird. for identifying that. Yeah, you know, today, though, is not going to be a great day for going out <laughs> to our local parks or wonderful local parks because it is going to be a bit gray and damp out there. But we will see some sun tomorrow in the afternoon. So there's the silver lining to your forecast. But as we look outside right now, we are seeing on the radar some of this very light rain mist drizzle moving through San Antonio. It's so light. In fact, I, I turned up the intensity so you can see it here. A shower pushing from Wilson County into Guadalupe County. Otherwise, though, it is just cool out this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with a live cam and you can see the fog, can't you? Uh, there's the tower for uh, the airport. It's starting to get uh, become difficult to see that because visibility at the airport is only a half a mile. Now it's up to two miles, but at one point it was down to half a mile visibility. It's 51. The airport is reporting some of that drizzle and mist. We've seen about a tenth of an inch of rain at the airport. Elsewhere, you can see that visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in Bernie, down to a mile in New Braunfels, down to three quarters of a mile in Hondo, down to practically zero out in Gonzales, all because of this higher humidity. Temperatures are right next to the dew points, and it's cold out there this morning. Temperatures in the upper 40s and low 50s, 48 in Bernie, 49 in Kerrville, 51 in San Antonio, in 48 in Seguin. Now, as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, those temperatures are going to barely budge up, uh, nudge up. We're going to be looking at temperatures near 55 degrees right around noon. Uh, notice though that the do the uh, chance for rain does come down as we head into the afternoon, so it's going to stay cloudy though. Temperatures should top off right near 60 degrees, and then this evening uh, temperatures are going to stay pretty steady in the upper 50s, right near 60 degrees later on tonight. If you're planning set your Saturday night, know that you won't necessarily need a umbrella, but maybe a light jacket with those temperatures near 60 degrees. That's going to be the high temperature today in San Antonio, upper 50s across the hill country, further out to the west closer to 70 degrees for Del Rio and Eagle Pass and it will be in the mid 70s down near Laredo. As we take a look at our weather setup, you can see drizzle and mist through most of East Texas right now this morning and in the northern tier we've got plenty of snowfall. There is a big snow system moving across the northern tier of the United States. It's going to be pulling some cold Canadian air south into Texas. Notice how cold it is behind that front zero and cut pink five below in Bismarck. So we do anticipate a big 
temperature drop as we head into next week. Now, as you look at the future cast, though, tomorrow we expect some drizzle in the morning hours and even some isolated showers and storms, but mainly up near Austin and out east toward the Houston area. By about one o'clock, we should be seeing skies clear in San Antonio, so you won't see the sun until after lunch tomorrow, but it should be a pretty pleasant afternoon, 72 degrees with some clearing. Then that front moves through Sunday night into Monday and it becomes chilly on Monday. Monday we'll be seeing a scattered light rain that'll come together a little bit more by Tuesday in the morning hours, scattered light rain. And yes, there even could be some light ice across parts of the hill country. Too early to talk about impacts from that, but I do think that it'll be light. Anything that falls will be light. You notice here in San Antonio, we expect to be above freezing, so no ice for us. So light rain possible Monday and Tuesday, more robust rainfall possible on Wednesday. Bit of a weather pattern shift here for us. It's going to be cool in the week ahead, chilly even, and damp at times, especially by Wednesday. So coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit more about rainfall potential from three, four days of rain chances in our forecast, but it's nice to see a, a change here. You know, February is usually on the chillier side. Think about the rodeo. Think about how we bundle up oftentimes around the rodeo. And in this case, it looks like we're going to see a uh, return to a little bit of a damp weather pattern for us for ne most of next week. You know, we can't complain. We really need this rain. We have a a lot of visitors in town this weekend visiting the Alamo no. Dome for the WWD Royal Rumble. So if you're going to be enjoying the Riverwalk or downtown San Antonio or the Pearl, just remember, bring your rain gear and it's going to be OK, especially today. Yeah. And if you don't have plans, you can always stay home and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. Mm. This is the weather for it. It is <laughs> always in cozy season, Jonathan Gopal. That's right. I, I love that. I like to be comfortable. <laughs> It's 817, temperature is 51 degrees. So the come of veterinarian is hitting the road to visit pets at their homes. What inspired him to hit the road? That's coming up. Plus, David Elder takes us to one of San Antonio's newest pizza joints that's serving up Detroit-style pies. The preview is next on Texas Eats. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, nine, six, fireball zero. Daily four, two, nine, six, one, fireball four. Cash five, those numbers are three, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-one, thirty-four. Mega millions, four, forty-three, forty-six, forty-seven, sixty-one, mega ball twenty-two, mega plier four. four. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Good luck. I want to talk about this pizza right here. How is it made? Actually, really straightforward. I said, you know, let's let's do something that you and I, my brother and I, we would eat, and that's double pepperoni. So you've got the, your <laughs> typical kind of lay flat, bigger diameter pepperonis that are yeah. under the cheese, but then we hit it with the natural casing pepperoni, that cup and char pepperoni on top. So you're getting two different kinds of pepperoni, and then the sauce obviously ladled on top. Here, cheers to you. Cheers to you. The Detroiter, that's the bite. Oh wow, give me some love, bro. Woo! The cupped pepperonis That's... that hold the grease. Oh, <laughs> so good. You put like a little more. I, mean, I, I like the little ranch. The cupped pepperonis because I oh, when, love that. Oh, when they, when they cup a words. little bit and they just like a little bowl of grease for you. I mean, that's a major cheat, Jason. Just peel the pepperoni off. Nice and crispy. Oh man, I want Look at some. us. We know what's for breakfast. <laughs> We're just like, ooh, <laughs> like grabbing the TV. Pizza, pepperoni pizza for breakfast. Nothing like a good cupped, <laughs> greased cupped pepperoni. <laughs> pepperoni for breakfast. All right, folks, there you have it. Pizza with your cup of coffee? Oh, Maybe? cold pizza. Can't go wrong with cold pizza. All right, 822 and 51 degrees. Up next, what would you do if you could work on the road? What inspired one veterinarian to make house calls in just moments? During the COVID pandemic, the U.S. saw a record number of families adding pets to their homes. The puppy craze was great news for animal shelters and one of the few bright spots of quarantine. But now we're dealing with a shortage in veterinarians to care for them all, and that's inspired one vet in Nevada to hit the road. Dr. Matthew McSweeney is staying busy in his lab. That goes wherever the patient is. It took a few years of testing it out, getting permits and all the equipment but now his van just rolls up and parks. His pet hospital can support spay and neuter procedures, vaccinations and injuries for a wide range of creatures from farm animals to puppies. 
A lot of people couldn't leave their house. Um, either they were afraid or doctor's orders. And their pets still needed care. And we do everything right in front of them, nothing secret. We're not taking them to the back room. Dr. McSweeney say, uh, can meet people where they are in town or even out in rural areas where vets are usually scarce. He says it's also a less stressful option and an end of life care option. Well, I'm glad that's available. Time is 827, temperature is 52 degrees. Coming up at 830, a life changing operation for a family in Fort Worth. How a hospital made history with three month old conjoined twins. And the remarkable story of an Iranian woman who has broken barriers to accomplish her dream of singing. How she's using what was once considered illegal to share a message. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 8.30 this, on this beautiful Saturday morning. I'm joined by Las Saritas, oh, the I Sarahs. My family you. calls me Sarita, Sarita, and Sarah Spivey calls me Sarita, too, which <laughs> I appreciate, because we're basically sisters. Mi otra Sarita. Mi otra Sarita. <laughs> Mi otra Sara. Yeah, so you know what? We are seeing some drizzle and some mist out there this morning. It's kind of gloomy as you're starting off your Saturday, but great cuddle weather, I guess, out there. Temperatures are in the low 50s, 53 in Del Rio, 51 in Hondo. Good morning in Kerrville, it's 50 degrees. 51 in New Braunfels, and here in San Antonio, 51 degrees. 52 Port SA, 50 in Converse, and 49 in Seguin. You look outside, you can see the mist, you can see the fog, and even some drizzle tracking through San Antonio as we speak. You know, overnight we saw about a tenth of an inch of rainfall from this drizzle, and we could see another couple of hundredths out there this morning as well. As we look at your Saturday, drizzle especially through this morning, but even by noon we'll still have some patchy fog. A stray shower can't be ruled out, but it will stay cloudy all day long and cool high temperature only near 60 degrees with light and variable wind. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about today's weather and we'll also talk about tomorrow how we will have some isolated rain in the morning. But if you're itching to go outside and soak up the sun, we will see some sun tomorrow afternoon. So that's good news for your weekend. As we head into next week, though, starting February, chilly and damp highs will only be in the 40s and the 50s and we have a good chance for some decent measurable rain. I'll be back with a look at that extended forecast in a few minutes. Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a woman is in the hospital after being shot in the leg on the city's southwest side. It happened on the corner of Deep Valley Drive and Apple Valley Drive. San Antonio police say the woman was riding around with her husband, driving through a neighborhood looking for suspects from a robbery that happened earlier on Friday. When they drove by an alley, shots were fired and struck the vehicle several times. The suspects took off and the woman was taken to University Hospital. Police, police say she's expected to be okay. CPS Energy has restored power to a west side home after a detached garage fire burned power lines in that area. It happened just after 4 a.m. on Mulberry Avenue near North Sarasamora Street. Firefighters say the detached garage was engulfed in flames when they arrived. They were able to keep it from spreading. Despite burning power lines overhead, the garage was completely destroyed, but no injuries were reported. For months after the May 24th tragedy at Robb Elementary, people have been donating money for the victims of Uvalde. More than $22 million started going to beneficiaries in November, and now the National Compassion Fund says about 95% of those funds have been sent out. There are about 500 beneficiaries right now. There are 17 minors that still need to turn in the necessary paperwork before they can get the, their portion of the fund. The National Compassion Fund says it told families to submit those documents, but until then, it's uncertain when those payments will be made. It's all about fire on the pit this morning. Jefferson High School students are putting their barbecuing skills to the test at the San Antonio Stock Show in Rodeo Junior Pitmaster Competition. That's right, it's going down in GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us live from the competition grounds outside of the AT&T Center. <laughs> Alyssa, the students have been out there all morning cooking since 5 a.m. How's it all coming along? 
Yes, Jonathan and Sarah, it's coming along great here. The students are having a wonderful time. They've prepared their chicken, ribs, and beef. We'll show you how they're over there working together, talking things out right now. They're working together carefully to execute those skills that they've acquired over the past several months preparing for this event to win that grand prize that could lead to tens of thousands of dollars and here to talk to a little talk to me a little bit more about this is senior student pitmaster competitor Australia Morales she's a senior at Jefferson High School and she's going to tell us what techniques you all are using today for the big competition uh, actually uh, before the competition started uh, we marinated the brisket overnight to have all the flavors soak in which actually you know helps the brisket have a much smoother taste much a uh, fantastic taste to it once it gets you know turned in to the judges and you know they'll have a more uh, flavored as well as soft bite since this is a one bite challenge perfect and that sounds delicious I wish I was one of the judges to get a taste of that juicy brisket <laughs> but just talk about how this experience has been for you all and how you all have been preparing uh, we've been preparing a lot over the past couple of months. Um, we've also uh, had a lot of like, you know, we have struggles, obviously, you know, like uh, not being able to like communicate properly, but we have improved a lot in that sense, as well as our teamwork skills. Um, I think a lot of us learned a lot how to like, you know, have good fire management skills, which is, you know, really important in this whole uh this whole thing that we're doing, the whole barbecue organization, uh, and you know, I think I learned a lot being part of this organization. It's helped me a lot. Perfect. Thank you so much, Australia, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Twenty thousand dollars in scholarships on the line if they win that grand prize, and we'll be sure to keep you updated in our later newscast on how these Jefferson High School students place. Jonathan, Sarah, back to you all. Thank you, Alyssa. Wishing everyone the best of luck, especially our own. Well, happening today, SAISD is holding a career fair. The district is looking for recruit carpenters, construction helpers, cooks, custodians, drivers, electricians, mechanics, plumbers, and so much more. It starts at 9 today and it goes till noon. You can register in advance online. The district says be prepared for on-site interviews and even on-site hiring. The event is located at SAISD's central office on Quincy Street. And hey, did you catch this story on KSAC.com? A life-changing operation for a family in Fort Worth. It took six surgeons and 25 medical professionals 11 hours to separate these three-month-old conjoined twins at Cook Children's Medical Center. The surgery happened last Monday and it's a first in the hospital's 105-year history. The parents, too emotional to speak, but doctors say they all feel like family now. Love to see a good success story. Absolutely. Wishing them the best as well. Time is 837, 52 degrees. Still ahead at 830. We're getting you ready for the NFL's Final Four. Championship Sunday is almost here and we'll look at who can move on to the Super Bowl. And after the break, the story of an Iranian woman who has broken cultural barriers to accomplish her own dream of singing. How she's using her voice that was considered illegal in her country to share a message. 52 degrees, 837. Let's see if we have any visibility out there. Nope, it's chilly out there, it's damp. But when, how, how long will this rain stick around for? Sarah Spivey will have our weekend forecast when we come back. This morning, a woman with a message of unity, diversity, and equality will sing her heart out right here in San Antonio. This after leaving her home country of Iran, where her dream of becoming a singer is illegal. That woman chose to sing the national anthem at this year's Dream Week Gala. I spoke with her and she says sharing her voice is something she's been fighting for her entire life. I was born in Iran, which is a beautiful country full of history, color, culture, um, but there's no freedom. At 22 years old, Gola made the decision to leave her country in pursuit of freedom through music. I always loved music, always loved singing. It was at a very young age Gola discovered her passion for singing. She studied in England, mastering in music psychology. That was a route that I took to, to arrive in America. We're so gallantly streaming. Gola will be singing the national anthem Friday for this year's Dream Week Gala. by an all-woman mariachi. 
feel really honored that I've been given this chance to, to sing it because it's a very, very big thing for me. She says as an immigrant, there is power in singing the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner. It's all about um, bravery and freedom and victory and I just love it so much. Bella says singing the national anthem is empowering and living in a country that allows her to is a privilege, a freedom not taken for granted. It's a very important event for our, uh, for our community to understand how different we are, how diverse we are, yet how we are very similar. And home of the... What a beautiful voice. Wow. Beautiful voice. So we had an opportunity to listen to her warm up when we were at the Tobin Center the, earlier this week. And I have to say she'll be performing tonight at the Carlos Alvarez Studio Theater at the Tobin. The event starts at 7. Thank you for that story, Jonathan. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Beautiful story there. Not so beautiful weather outside <laughs> right now. No, it's it's damp and drizzly out there, but we will see some sun this weekend, particularly tomorrow afternoon. However, we need the rain, so we'll take any little bit that we can get. We're under extreme and exceptional drought, and as we look ahead, our weather pattern is going to change to favor some more rain. Now, today we've got that drizzle, about 40% coverage, but as we look ahead to the week, some Light rain is going to be possible Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday is when I think we'll have some decent rainfall around San Antonio. We're talking potentially up to an inch. Now the heaviest of the rain will be east of San Antonio toward Houston, as it typically is in many situations. But even around here in San Antonio, through Thursday, including today, we could see up to an inch of rainfall. Now, most of this rain will fall on Wednesday when we have the more robust rain chance. But as you're looking outside right now, we've already seen a tenth of an inch of rain at the airport. This is a picture of the airport. You just can't see the airport because of the fog. Visibility is down to a mile. It's 51 degrees, reporting some light mist and drizzle. And be careful on the roads this morning. They are slick. That's 410 there. You can see some ponding on the roads. As we look at visibility around the KSAT 12 viewing area. The only part of our viewing area that's really not seeing a widespread heavy fog is out toward Del Rio where visibility is still decent at eight miles. But visibility is down to a quarter of a mile in Rock Springs, down to three quarters of a mile in Hondo, down to half a mile in Kerrville. And as we get closer to San Antonio, visibility down to a mile at the airport, down to a quarter of a mile up in Bernie, down to a mile in New Braunfels. So this fog is really going to stick with us through most of the day. Even though the drizzle will let up, it's still going to be a pretty gray day for us. As you look at the radar, some drizzle being detected around San Antonio. There's also drizzle to the uh, west of San Antonio toward Hondo and Sabinal as well. It's just that the radar is right here new, near New Braunfels. And with such light precipitation, it can only pick up things that are right nearby. So we look to the visibility and it shows that there's lower visibility. There's drizzle out there as well out west. As you look at KSAT 12 uh, forecast, know that we do anticipate the drizzle to let up by noon. It'll still be in the mid 50s around noon. And then as we head into the afternoon, staying cloudy, 60 degrees for the high temperature. Winds should be from the south at about five miles per hour. And then tonight, temperatures hold steady. We're not going to see that big of a drop off in temperatures. In fact, no drop off in temperatures. It's going to be in the upper 50s all evening long for your Saturday night plans. Now, as we look at tomorrow's future cast, this is a snapshot right around six. I think we'll have some more areas of drizzle early tomorrow morning. And then as we head into the mid morning hours, some thunderstorms for the Austin area and even here in San Antonio, an isolated shower or perhaps storm is possible in addition to some areas of patchy drizzle. But by noon, we're going to see skies clear and we will see some sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow. So that's some good news for your weekend. You'll be able to salvage a little bit of your weekend outdoors, especially tomorrow afternoon. High temperatures tomorrow on the warm side. So today's going to be cool. Tomorrow's going to be warm in the afternoon. Low 70s around San Antonio, upper 70s out west toward Del Rio. And as we look at your weather setup, there's a front to the north of us. This front is going to be moving through Sunday night into Monday. That means in the week ahead, we're going to have a pretty chilly forecast. This is a look at high temperatures in the week ahead. Highs will only be in the 40s and in the 50s. And 
And as we look ahead again, better rain chances for us Wednesday. We'll have some light rain Monday, light rain Tuesday, but Wednesday a decent chance for showers and storms as far as coverage goes. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about how parts of the hill country should be on alert for some light ice Tuesday morning. I'll have that forecast for you in the next half hour. And we just got the pollen count in, so I'll have a look at that too. Thank you. I know my my plants, they're starting to sprout with the spring. Yeah. And I'm like, no, not yet. Well, the <laughs> entering good, February. Yeah, right, right. The good news in San Antonio is I don't anticipate a freeze for us in the next seven days in San Antonio. Thank you, Sarah. So your plants have seven days. <laughs> At least. Soak At up least. soak up the rain. <laughs> 847, 52 degrees. Up next, did you know you can send Valentine's Day cards to service members and veterans? When we come back, a spotlight on this local program and how it's impacted lives through the years. And taking a look outside uh, throughout San Antonio, as Sarah mentioned, on and off drizzle. The roadways looking clear, but again, drive safely if you have to leave your house this morning. This Valentine's Day, you can spread the love by making cards for service members and veterans. Tiffany Huerta shows us how this annual campaign by the nonprofit Soldiers Angels has impacted so many lives throughout the years. There are different ways you can spread love this Valentine's Day. That's the goal for these Soldiers Angels staff working in the hallway. Our service members love to receive them, particularly because they don't expect them. It's an annual campaign to show you care putting together cards to share. We'll get them to deployed service members as well as veterans who are hospitalized in VA medical centers around the country. To help spread the love to service members and veterans, all you have to do is include a dollar with every Valentine's Day card you send, and that will cover the shipping costs for the care packages. But I was actually a Gulf War vet, and so when I was actually in Korea, we got cards and letters all the time, so it was wonderful getting them. Any color or design is fine. Remember to be creative with your Valentine. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. I was just asking Jonathan Cotto, our, our veteran here on staff, um, <laughs> what used to get care packages? Oh yeah, all the time while we were in the Gulf. So I, I, was, I was sharing with you, it's, it's just so important that organizations like Soldier Angels do what they do because when troops get these packages out on deployment, it really does mean the world. So you, get, really you look forward to these I days. would look forward to those cookies. Oh, I love yeah. that and love what they're doing. It's 852 and 52 degrees. And still to come, if you're looking to add some four-legged fun to your no. life, you, can, you gotta have four-legged fun in your life. A Texas-sized adoption event is going on right now in San Antonio. We'll explain next. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's a big weekend in the NFL. We've reached Pro Football's version of the Final Four, and this Sunday we'll find out who's going to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 57, in two weeks out in Arizona. For the NFC, the San Francisco 49ers will head to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon at Lincoln Financial Field. Then over in the AFC, the highly anticipated matchup between Joe Burrow's Cincinnati Bengals and Patrick Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs that kicks off at 5.30 on Sunday at Arrowhead in Kansas City. And of course, the winners of these games will go on to the Super Bowl. Back here at home, are you looking to corral a new companion? If so, then boot scoot down to the San Antonio Animal Care Services for a Texas-sized adoption event. The Dogs, Cats, and Cowboy Hats Adopt-a-thon. It's going on right now through Sunday, February 5th. Dogs and cats over four years old can be adopted for free, and pets under the age of four can be adopted for $20. Every pet adopted at ACS receives free sterilization, vaccination, and a registered microchip. And if you're a wrestling fan and heading out to the Royal Rumble tonight <laughs> via offering a park, via is offering a park and ride service for you. It will be available from Crossroads Park and Ride beginning at 4.30 p.m. Saturday. And return service will continue after one hour after the event ends. So WWE fans can pay just $1.30 each way for the service to and from the Alamo Dome. Cash and credit cards are accepted. Uh, there's going to be at least over 40,000 people there. Wow. So I know the city pushed out an alert. Hey, if you're planning to be here, prepare for this traffic. Um, you know, either do via or yeah. use ride sharing apps and stuff. You can find all this information on KSAT.com. I will be the Uber tonight for my husband. He is going <laughs> to this. He's Major wrestling fan, right? Very excited. He's so, so excited. So I live vicariously through him when it comes to <laughs> wrestling. Watched it last night.
And as you said, Sarah, just plan in advance and uh, avoid the chaos which the traffic can cause at times. It's 8.57 and 52 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, cities across the West are feeling the heat as natural gas prices skyrocket. Why a city hall near El Paso was forced to lock down. And we're headed to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, where they are saying let the good times roll, how they're getting ready for Mardi Gras. Also coming up.